I'm Gary Thornton with Watt, and we're here in Washington, D.C. at the 2010 Winter Meeting of the USA Poultry and Egg Export Council with Mr. Jim Sumner, the Council's President, and with him are two gentlemen from Russia to talk about the poultry trade with Russia. Uh, Mr. Sergei Yushin is Chairman of the Executive Committee of the Russian National Meat Association, and Mr. Albert Davilev, Director of the USA Poultry and Egg Export Council's office in Moscow. Gentlemen, uh, 2010 has been a tough year for U.S. poultry exports to Russia, with those exports being blocked by a Russian ban on U.S. chicken much of the year because it was rinsed with chlorinated water. That issue has been resolved, but there is another issue regarding frozen poultry being used in further processing. And Russian officials are saying that their country doesn't need imported chicken. The question is, is Russia over as far as U.S. poultry exports are concerned? Jim? Well, I, I think Russia is far from over. Uh, maybe there are some people, maybe including some politicians, that may think they're over. But in actuality, uh, I think Russia is going to be dependent on poultry imports, uh, especially from the United States, for many years to come. Uh, especially from a standpoint that, uh, uh, from a cost perspective, domestic production in Russia really cannot compete with the imported leg quarters from the United States. And I think we've demonstrated, partially through a, a demonstration project we had in the form of a joint venture, that we're serving two completely separate markets. The market sold, served by the uh, Russian producers uh, are aimed at, at one class and, and a certain segment of the market. Uh, the leg quarters imported from the United States are for another class, and they depend on having low-cost economical product available to them. Sir David, what do you think? Uh, I agree that our trade will continue and uh, most probably it will have to change somewhat. I agree with Jim that uh, Russian producers and the American poultry, they serve different uh, consumers and different customers with different income levels. And yet we see that uh, step by step the uh, income of Russian people and ordinary uh, consumer is increasing. On the other hand, the development of Russian uh, poultry production is going to lead to uh, more affordable prices. Internal competition will have to play its role. And in the long run, I see that uh, some parts of chicken which uh, will be in abundance, like, for example, white meat, will be much more affordable. And yet, uh, Jim was right, uh, American poultry is still most uh, affordable protein for the Russian consumer. Uh, what is the uh, current situation with Russia's imports of poultry? Well, I'll, I'll say that uh, the situation is uh, very interesting. On one side, uh, the trade has become hungry for work for the last nine months when uh, there was no trade because of foreign ban, but uh, we see a huge amount of product coming into Russia that's good and bad. Good because it helps uh, trade work and processors are busy with banking product for Russia. At the same time, the overabundance of this product on the Russian market uh, brings the prices down, severely affecting the Russian imports, uh, importers, businesses, and therefore they don't have enough money to buy more product. So, uh, summarizing in terms of uh, volume, uh, Russia will get about 270,000 metric tons of U.S. poultry by the end of the year. This will come within three month period, uh, meaning that 90,000 metric tons per month is at least three times higher than the Russian market can consume within the month. There will be a certain inventory piled up uh, with a rollover to 2011, which will put some pressure on uh, imports in 2011, considering the lower volume. That's the situation. Well, what is the uh current situation in regarding inspection of U.S. plants and the uh, 20, uh, 2011 quota? Well, the, the uh, inspections took place uh, a couple of months ago and, and we have the results of, of those inspections. We are now looking at 
some of the facilities that uh, had uh, deficiencies are in the process of correcting those so that they can uh, become eligible to uh, resume shipping. So that seems to be moving forward. Uh, probably the, the biggest uh, concern of the industry right now is, is just where are we going to be from a quota standpoint for 2011. And uh, uh, we hear different things uh, each day. Uh, right now, uh, we're hearing that uh, 350,000 metric tons may be uh, the, the likely offer for next year. Uh, Sergey, maybe you have some other insight into what form uh, those 350,000 tons may be. I see that you have uh, very informative uh, uh, insiders. Uh, this is right, uh, the figure which was uh, already uh, pronounced by the Russian uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Zubkov, is 350,000 for the next year. But this is not for the U.S. This is total uh, in quota imports of uh, poultry for all countries. Uh, judging from uh, the uh, requirements of the Russian market, from the demand of the processing industry, I can uh, assume that uh, the U.S. with quota would be able to uh, supply 250 or 280,000 tons next year. Maybe to go uh, also sell anything or something out of quota. It will depend on the market situation, which is uh, very tough, and uh, I'll bet I'll just put it out. Uh, well, what are the other developments in Russian trade policy and regulations concerning poultry? I would say that we're still concerned about the requirement on the uh, water content because U.S. Uh, poultry has traditionally has uh, have a higher uh, retained water content than uh, competitors from Brazil or EU. And Russia uh, still hasn't removed the requirement of four percent four percent of retained water. So um, we may expect certain restrictive measures from the sanitary authorities. Uh, this is the major challenge for the U.S. poultry industry. But so far, we haven't had any serious issues with this. I would say that uh, on the uh, technical side, uh, as far as the technical barriers are concerned, the only development which we've uh, had as a challenge uh, has been the restriction on using of frozen poultry for further processing. But it's sort of partial because this, uh, for example, MDM or boneless meat may be used for uh, heat treated poultry, further processed poultry. This will definitely increase the cost of uh, Russian processors, but this is not not uh, this is not very tragical. Well, how is the development of the Russian poultry industry uh, proceeding, uh, Mr. Yuskin? Uh, it's uh, moving very steadily uh, upwards uh, and it's a uh, very stable uh, increase of volumes from 250,000 to 350,000 a year. This year uh, we expect uh, even a big increase of 350,000 tons. Uh, next year shows a figure of around 250,000 tons, but much more dependent on the situation with feed, feed prices, which will certainly uh, affect certain uh, producers. But anyway, the Russian Poultry Producers Union expects to reach 4.5 million tons of production by 2020. Uh, <clears throat> Russian leaders have said that Russia would not only be self-sufficient in poultry production, but also be a major exporter. Will there be two-way trade in poultry for Russia, with Russia being both an importer and an exporter? Well, I think that uh, this is a very natural development, uh, as with many other countries. Uh, when we talk with the Russian government, we uh, very often uh, show an example of the U.S., which is a major beef producer, and on the other hand, one of the biggest importers of beef, even bigger than Russia, or, for example, uh, pork imports. So there is nothing wrong with this two-way trade. And I just want to remind uh, that uh, Mr. Putin, our prime minister, has repeatedly mentioned that the, there will always be some kind of uh, or some volume of imports, uh, but Russia has to have ambitions to go out on the other markets like Turkey or well, let's say India or China uh, are doing. This is nothing wrong with it. I would like to add to uh, Sergei's statements the only thing that uh, to be competitive on the international market will take uh, Russian industries, poultry, pork, or any other industry a lot of time to to perform in the way that they can uh, be competitive 
as uh, uh, not even Brazil, uh, Brazilian or U.S. product, but at least product being, which is being exported from Latin America or from Turkey. So far, we haven't seen any s uh, substantial progress in this area. I, yes. I think this could become very interesting. Uh, Russia has ex always excelled at regulating imports, but how are they going to perform when they're trying to comply with the import regulations of other countries? Uh, it's kind of a reversal uh, of position, so it'll be interesting to see how Russia I think responds. it may even change the attitude towards import. It could. When we really see these obstacles, these difficulties. So, in fact, uh, uh, if we uh, limit imports too much, it won't help us to pr uh, progress in exporting. As, as we say with our friends in Mexico, trade is a two-way street, so uh, they may uh, have to change their directional signs. Well, uh, what type products uh, would you anticipate Russia would be most proficient and efficient at producing? Bulk trim? Yes. Uh, if we speak about further processed products, we uh, have a special economic zone in Kaliningrad region which uh, makes it possible to import raw material poultry, uh, bonus poultry at uh, zero uh, duty, uh, duty and uh, without any quota. And uh, some companies have already built uh, state-of-the-art enterprises there to produce further processed products. And for example, McDonald's in EU is already uh, going to sign contract with these enterprises. So, as it seems, uh, as it can seem strange, uh, EU is one of the markets for further processed products. I think that we will have this abundance of uh, white meat, like chicken breast, maybe this, and certainly some specialty products for uh, uh, Southeast Asia, which we're already doing. Albert? Well, I would say that uh, with the increased amount of uh, birds, killed a day, uh, Russia has a huge potential for exporting feed to Southeast, Southeast Asia, and especially at premium prices, which uh, those markets are paying, which are much higher than uh, the price for raw meat in Russia. Uh, again, it's a technological challenge for the Russian poultry industry, because uh, I don't think we have uh, uh, equipment in, uh, sophisticated enough to properly process uh, the feed according to the, re the required specs. But it will take some time to improve, and uh, Russia can handle this. In, uh, in my expectation, three to five years, it will be one of the ba major exporters of feed to Southeast Asia. Well, and, and there are uh, local products, too, that uh, could be attractive for uh, Russian consumers outside of Russia. I mean, some of the products like shashlik and some of the sausages and such that are unique to Russia uh, could have a broad international appeal. What are the uh, biggest challenges and the biggest opportunities for U.S.-Russian trade and opportunities for other products or, or ventures? Getting Russia into the WTO, I think, will be huge and open a lot of doors in, in this regard. So we're, we're looking forward to that. I think it'll... Uh, it'll uh, help the, the international trade situation and, and, and be beneficial. Of course, there are some people in Russia who are not supportive of that, but it uh, looks like uh, uh, the Prime Minister is, is certainly supportive and that uh, Russia is moving in that direction. We have been in this negotiation for 17 years and uh, soon it will be 18 years. In fact, in Russia it's allowed to sell alcohol to people from 18 years. In the U.S. 21, so I wonder whether it takes one year or three years before we accept <laughs> the WTO. <laughs> but I agree with uh, Jim that uh, it's in the interest of both countries uh, that Russia promptly enters this uh, organization which will really clear up a lot of obstacles in our trade. Well, just briefly, what's your outlook for 2011 for the Russian producers, processors, and for U.S. poultry imports there? Uh, I would expect Russia to produce, uh, to hit the three million metric tons level uh, in the forthcoming year. Uh, imports will be within the quota uh, range, which is 350,000 metric tons. So that's that's uh, I would say that's the given. Um, I expect some difficulties for Russian poultry in terms of uh, you know, product line. I, 
I'm afraid that uh, many producers will still keep on producing whole chicken instead of going to deeper processing. And Russian consumer is more inclined to buy different cuts today. So for some of producers, it will be very tough, very difficult year with more whole chicken on the market and low prices, with high feed prices. This will be the highest challenge next year. Uh, it could be an interesting year. Uh, as we often say we're, regarding Russia, uh, anything is possible. So, uh, of course, we're hoping for uh, a predictable trade flow and uh, uh, to avoid some of the problems that we've had in the past, especially this year. Uh, and, and that uh, the relations between our countries, not just on poultry issues, but on all issues, uh, including start and other issues which can impact attitudes and, and affect trade uh, uh, outlooks are, are, are smooth. So we're, we're hopeful for a very peaceful, productive, cooperative year with, with our trade with Russia.